Hi, I'm Greg from ZE Partner, and today I'm going to be doing a quick video on how to set up a new domain name in Zoho Mail. So load up Zoho Mail and click on your profile picture, then click Admin Console. Now click Add. In my case, this is zetraining.net and click Add. Now you'll see it wants us to prove we own this domain name. So click copy here, and then you'll see I have my domain already open here at my hosting company. And you can see here that under domain settings, I've got the DNS zone editor. So if we click there, we can now add a text record up here. We're gonna change the TTL, which stands for time to live to five minutes. And we're gonna paste in that text record. And you'll see that it tells us to leave the first part blank or with just an at symbol. So in this case, we'll just leave this blank and click create. Now, if we go back here, we can say verify text record, but bear in mind, this does sometimes take time. I found SiteGround to be really quick, but sometimes other domain providers and even SiteGround themselves can be quite slow. Great, so that's been verified. Now we need to point our MX records to Zoho Mail. So we're going to add more records and we're going to just copy the address for the first one. You'll see it's priority 10. And again, we're leaving the name as blank. So if we go back here, we click back, we click on MX records, change our time to live to five, priority 10 and paste this in, leave this blank, create. And now we've got to do the same thing three times. So we'll do it again for the 20 priority. And finally, we'll do the same thing for the 50 priority. Now again, this can take time to update, but in our case, we hope that SiteGround is going to do it quickly. So we'll verify. So this is reminding us that we still have MX records for our old provider. So the domain comes with default providers for the mail and I need to delete these. Otherwise the mail coming in to the domain won't know where to go. So you see, I'm looking for my MX records for the old provider and I'm deleting them now so that the only MX records we'll have here will be for Zoho. So if we go back and we go verify my records again now you'll see that has been verified now this is very important and this is where a lot of people stop because technically mail will now go to my email address at ztraining.net when someone sends an email to that it'll come to my inbox on zoho mail but that's not good enough you must 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 set up your sender policy framework so again it's just an easy case of adding another record and you'll see here that we want to copy all of this. But now this is really important. If you already have a record that starts V equals SPF1, then we want to add this into that existing record. You don't want to create multiple versions of this. So I'll show you what I mean. So if we scroll down here, we can see here that I already have one set up. So instead of adding a brand new one, and just for your information, if I was adding a brand new one, it would be up here as a text record, time to live five, and I'd paste it in there. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to edit the existing one that I already have, and I'm going to, actually, I'm just gonna replace all of this because what was here before was for the old mail provider, and I no longer need that. But when I set this email address up with Zoho Desk or inside Zoho CRM and all those other places, then I will just add to this one existing record. So now we come back and we say verify and that verification has gone through. Now we need to set up the DKIM. Now this is the encryption that is added to your email that your mail program can then check with the domain to see that it's actually come from us because technically anybody can send an email from your email address, but that's what's called spoofing. 
and we put DKIM in place to stop spoofing from being possible so that when our emails are sent to people, their email program can tell that it's legitimate and it's come from us. This will help massively with your delivery and making sure that your emails don't go into people's spam boxes. So here we're going to copy the text name and we're gonna go back here and we're gonna say the name is that and then we're gonna go and copy the DKIM record and we're going to paste that in here and we're gonna keep the time to live at five minutes and we're going to create. Now we can go back here and we can scroll down and say verify DKIM record. And now you can see that our domain is properly set up. So there's a few more things we can do. We can go in here and we can also set up DMARC, which is basically the, the top level of making sure that our emails are authentic. So in order to do this, we want to fill these instructions in. So we're going to say that we want to quarantine the emails when emails come in with DMARC validation issues, the aggregate notification email address. So this is the one that we want to send emails to with reports on how DMARC is going. This I'll just set as my direct email. Forensic notifications, we'll do the same. For subdomains, we'll say do nothing because if someone's sending it to, you know, training.zepartner.net, then that's fine with me. We'll leave the policy percentage as default and we'll set these as relaxed, but you might want to set them as higher if you get a lot of mail that your team are potentially going to click on links and do silly things like that, and you might wanna make 100% sure that they don't get dodgy emails, then you can mark it as strict. I see myself as a relatively competent user, so I'm happy to make that final judgment myself. Now we click generate. Now we copy this and we go back to our site tools, click back, put another text record in. We want this to be five minutes. We paste in the DMARC as the name and we paste this in as the value and we generate. And now if we come back here, we can say verify DMARC record. And that's all done. Fantastic. So now you might be interested as to how you set up your mailboxes. If you click on advanced settings and click catch all address, here you can set your existing main address as your catch-all address. The other thing you can do is you can go onto your users and you can set up alias addresses. So if we click into my user, you can see here under mail settings that I have email aliases. So I can now add an alias. I can select from this drop-down list zetraining.net, which is our new domain name, which I've just added. And I can say help at zetraining.net. Actually, I'm also going to change this to ZE training and I'm going to click add. There we go. So now when I go into my email, I can see that I've received an email from the Zoho team saying that my new email address has been added. And if I click to send a new email, I can now select from help at ZE training. And then the name on this account will be ZE training. So when that hits somebody's inbox, they'll see the name ZE Training as the from. Let me know in the comments if you have any trouble with this and I'll see how I can help you. If this works for you, please give us a like on this video. And if you're looking to learn more about Zoho, why don't you check out our next video teaching you all about Zoho Flow.